Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Thank this you. is uh, the Seven Shoulder Board, and we are very lucky to invite uh, main expert uh, regarding rotator cuff tear, uh, Pietro Rondelli from Milano. He's professor of orthopedic, and uh, he's the chief of the Department of Orthopedic University Hospital. Thank you, Pietro, to spend time with us. Thank you, Philippe. Thank this. you for the invitation. Zumi, Matthias Zumstein, you know very well, is Bern. He was prof he's professor orthopedic, and now he, he does in private in uh, in Bern, and uh, he did a lot of works uh, regarding uh, the cuff, on the recurrent tear, on the biological. And uh, thank you, Matthias, to spend one hour with us. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks. Hi. And Luc, and you know very well Luc from Tours. This is a professor of orthopedic. He's a University of Tours, chief of the department. And uh, he's very lucky this year because he stay president of the Orthopedic French Society for two years with the pandemic. And uh, thank you, Luc, to, to share with us uh, your knowledge regarding Cuff Richter. And you, you know Jean David is my co moderator. And you know, from Ambroise uh, Paré. And we will start with the first case. I would like to thank a uh, lot of attendees, 80, because this is a difficult uh, topic. And uh, thank you to, to share with uh, us your knowledge, because you can uh, chat and you can do. And we try to answer you. The first case this is a male, 48 years old. He's a manual worker because he uses his arm always uh, up. He's a plasterer. Uh, he was uh, a cuff tear, degenerative cuff tear in 2019. And uh, we repair by arthroscopy, uh, supraspinatus tear, subscapularis tear, and biceps tenodesis. And uh, I didn't do this operation, but uh, he was very happy after this operation. And uh, I saw him in consultation 18 months after the first operation with a painful shoulder, limited range of motion. And you see that the forward elevation was 100 degrees. The shoulder was not paralytic, but uh, limitation of forward elevation. External rotation was good, 40 degrees with good strength. And there is a anterior superior head subluxation. There is no arthritis, and you see that the constant score was bad. The function of the shoulder was 40%, and it was painful. You see that this patient, young patient, he tried to do a, a rise of upper limb, and is limited to 100 degrees. When I do, I pull, is easy. And he can maintain in elevation with a good deltoid, but it's not so easy to, to go down. And it does a flexion of the shoulder. You see that the, the Gerber test was positive. Here. The belly press test was positive. And it was very painful anteriorly. Uh, in the area of uh, subscapularis, and uh, and I did the MRI. You see that he was. You see the anchors. You see the return. I go back to show you very well. The return of the supraspinatus. And another video. See here. You can see that the subscapularis was not so very nice. It's very thin. A good infraspinatus. There is no arthritis, no posterior subluxation, no anterior subluxation. On the last video, you see the quality of the muscle. You see that the subscapularis is completely atrophic. And there is a supraspinatus atrophic also, good posterior superior cuff. Good teres minor, good infraspinatus, but you see that the quality of the subscapularis is not good. And uh, the supraspinatus, you see here, the subscapularis is not very nice. If we want to uh, summarize 
we see the uh, return of the supraspinatus. The subscapularis is not functional. The patient is very painful with an uh, impossibility to go back to work with a little anterior superior subluxation of the head. And uh, he has to me uh, the, the, bet, uh, the, the best uh, procedure for this. Uh, he did physiotherapy a long time ago before to visit me, because, but with a failure. And uh, the question is, how do you decide for him? There is no arthritis. And uh, he's a young guy, 39, 49 years old. And this is a key question. What, what would you do for him? Excuse me, Philippe, I have a question. Yes. Did this guy retire because of a new trauma? No, no, no trauma, no trauma. Are we sure? No trauma? Yes, no trauma. He told me that uh, the first operation, uh, because he was plasterer 20 years ago, and uh, his degenerative lesion, and he was repaired. On the second, and after six months, he came back to, to the job. And after one year, again, pain and limitation, but no trauma. But the work is very hard, plasterer, and there maybe it's a reason why there is a, a recurrent tear. Uh, what, what do you do for him, uh, Pietro? Maybe you start? Uh, I, I will do, uh, I mean, it, in open surgery, I will go and check the subscapularis. If the subscapularis is good, I will repair the subscapularis because it looks like it's a rupture in continuity, the one that you showed in the, in the MRI. And, and if it's not possible to repair the subscapularis open uh, to do a very good job, then I will do a transfer of the pector pectoralis major. Okay, you know that the subscapularis is completely atrophic with fatty infiltration 3, 4. And uh, uh, I think that is not functional. I, Even I if you the tendon, what happens? In case like that, I have experience with a good repair of the subscapularis to have the head recentered and the deltoid able to move the shoulder, uh, reducing the pain. So I'm, I'm not so skeptical about the muscle belly in this case. I'm more, I'm more skeptical about the quality of the tendon, okay, to be reinserted. That's the a, a big issue. So if it, I don't trust in the repair of the subscapularis, I will transfer with the pack, pack major. Okay, Matthias, what do you, how do you assess this case and what do you propose? Okay, if I correctly understand, this guy was good, I went back to work and then again he had yes. a deterioration of the situation. Secondly, yes. as far as I see, he has no static anterior subluxation in the axial plane, as far as I see. And third, he has no escape by trying to flexion. It's a painful situation, but he has not an anterior superior escape during flexion. Is that correct, Philip? Yes. Okay, so then I think I would go for, uh, uh, as well as open search, as Pietro said, but then I would try to go for, um, uh, for a PEC major transfer. Okay, but you, you remember that the supraspinatus is torn? And it's yes. retracted at the, at the level of the glenoid. This and, will, uh, it's a, it's a yes. big problem because it's a non functional subscapularis with irreparable yes. supraspinatus tear. Yes, I, I think I have two options. Then I, I, it's a trophic supraspinatus and its quality is not, not, uh, not, not, not good. And we know that the PEC major transfer are less good if you have a tear of the supraspinatus. If there is still on the medial side a functional part of the suprasumatus, I would potentially augment it by repair it back and augment it maybe with a patch to suprasumatus and then do a pec major transfer. I know that I have uh, the other opportunity would be a reverse. In my hands, a balloon spacer or a super capsule with reconstruction, I do not think would work. And uh, that's why I would go for this treatment, knowing that the reverse at that age gives a good result, but has a, lo a high rate of uh, revision and high rate of uh, complication and the elderly people, and I would not go in this uh, treatment. But Philippe, I have a question. 
how many of these people, hard worker, with the good subscapularis, good infraspinatus, and no supraspinatus, you see that they have full function, they are strong, they can do heavy work. I, I see some of them. Yes, but the pectoris major is not a good subscapularis. No, no, no. I say, I say in a case like that, once we have reestablished the subscapularis, the infraspinatus, we don't yes. have to care about the supraspinatus. I agree with you. Uh, Luc, what do you think? Uh, how do you analyze this situation and what do you propose? This uh, situation is very critical because uh, the patient is very young and he is a manual worker. So for me, whatever the treatment I choose, I am sure that uh, never he will be able to, to go to his uh, whole job. So first of all, for me, we have to solve or to address uh, the professional issue. Probably I will begin with uh, physiotherapy and uh, injection of corticoid to see if I can decrease uh, the pain. After that, for me, uh, it's not possible to repair this cuff because uh, supraspinatus is too uh, retracted and because the subscapularis for me is too infiltrated in the upper part. So if I need to do something for him to, to avoid uh, a bad prognosis, because in my hand, the anterior superior uh, cuff tear are the tear with a bad, with the worst uh, prognosis, much more than the posterior superior tear. So because of his age, because there is no static anterior solution, probably, I would go for latissimus dorsi transfer for the subscap and nothing on the on the supraspinatus. But look, if, if he improves the pain with the physiotherapy and steroid injection, do you still do surgery to prevent uh, uh, the evolution, or or do you try and maintain him with? with I am not sure. Injections? I am not sure that I prevent the evolution with a. With a transfer, it's it's mainly to improve the patient. So if uh, the patient is uh, is better with uh, injection and uh, physiotherapy, I stop with that. Okay. okay if uh, if uh, if I summarize, uh, Pietro, repair gain the subscapularis and the pectoris major transfer for augmentation. Okay, Pietro, you agree? Yes. Yes. Why do you choose the latissimus dorsi rather than the pec major? Because in my hand, uh, I have no good result with pec major, and because the uh, direction of the pec major is uh, quite uh, 90 degrees with the direction of the subscap. So, but so the paper from Gerber and from yeah, Resch at 10 and 20 years. I know that, but I tried. You don't have the same experience. I, I tried, but I, I have not been able to, to get the same results. But even, even Resch published very nice results yeah, yeah. with that. Uh, right. I mean, I, I had good experience. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I do not question with you. But it, it's, it's not so bad, despite the, the lever arm of the pack major is, is not perfect. I agree with you. OK, Matthias, you confirm yeah. that the pectoris major transfer? Yes, I mean, I have, uh, I have personally no experience with the anterior latissimus dorsi. I know that this is the debate now. I do a pectoralis major because for the pain relief, I think it's uh, it works well in my hands. I have experience with that, not with the anterior latissimus dorsi, but for uh, for stabilization of a skin scape or a static subluxation, it does not work. I think neither the lat dorsi and no the pec major. But coming back to the question, I would repair what I would have of the supra of the anterior superior cuff if there is any possibility, knowing that it won't be a good good good, good result, but do a pec major transfer additionally. Okay, I show you what, what we what I did. I did uh, a latissimus dorsi transfer to the less severities. I did by I fixed by arthroscopy. And uh, when I did arthroscopy of the shoulder. Uh, the subscapularis was not detached, but this is, it was fibrous tissue, and it was not a good quality. 
So in first minatus was correct, Teres minor, of course, and supras minatus was not, re not repairable. So I harvested the, the latissimus dorsi with a small axillary approach because I thought that it was very important to release the subscaparis because my goal is to fix at the superior part of the less tuberosities because when you do examination of the patient, you have a antero superior migration, not pseudoparietic, but the, the head, the human head was not stable. And my goal with the latissimus dorsi is, is to, to go from back to anteriorly and very hot, uh, close to the supraspinatus to have a, a good a pull of the humeral head. So I did that by uh, fixation by arthroscopy and uh, I saw the patients uh, six months after and I visited this, I saw this patient this afternoon and I did a video and it's very interesting. When you ask to the patient, he's told that the pain is better, is less pain, is satisfied, but the function is not perfect. And I will show you, uh, you see that the constant score after six months is better. And I will show you the video of uh, today. And uh, you see that it's very interesting. Okay, this is today. You see that it's the right side. You see that the range of motion is not perfect but it's different that preoperatively, and he has a good exervotation. He has less pain, and uh, he didn't go back to, to the job. You see that exervotation was not perfect. Still, uh, the, the, the belly press test is, and you see that Gerber is also positive. When uh, you do examination, I'm not very happy, but he told me that is better. I hope so that with the physiotherapy it will be better to see that. Okay, my comment is the patient is satisfied, but I, I'm not very satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and the objective score is not very well, but the patient continued to do physiotherapy. Do you have a comment, uh, uh, Pietro? Yes, or Yes, Luc. I have two questions. First, do you think that the trans uh, lat lat uh, dorsi transfer limited the external rotation because you have less external rotation yes. than before? And second one, why? What is the interest to do that under arthroscopy? I I, I think that uh, arthroscopy in this situation is. Uh, for me, you can check uh, completely the joint okay. without aggressive to the soft tissue. I think it's good. But you can do that by a, a deltopectoral approach? Yes, but... Uh, without injury to deltoid or, or pec major? Yes, but if you do a deltopectoral approach, you cannot release the latissimus dorsi uh, as so well if you do axillary approach. Okay. With the axillary approach, you can detach from the angle of the scapula, and the excursion is better than the deltopectoral approach. Okay. I think that that is important. But you can do deltopectoral on axillary approach. Okay. But I think that is a, is a elegant to do arthroscopy for the shoulder. Do you have uh, Pietro? Do you have comments? Uh, yes, I have. I have one one comment uh, for sure. I agree with Luke that the, the lack of external rotation is coming from the kind of transfer, but I think that is early. It's only six months follow up, yes. correct, Philippe? Yes. So I would expect something coming out uh, with the better results in other four, six months. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I, I think that the, the stiffness in external rotation uh, depends. For me, it's not the latissimus dorsi transfer because I don't understand very well the biomechanic. I think that the shoulder is stiff. Okay. And uh, it's a reason for me. What do you think, David? Because you do uh, It depends on the passive range of motion that you have. You know better than we do what passive motion he had when you passive examine him. Limited. Passive is limited in external rotation. Wow. So he's stiff, okay. probably. Because in your biomechanical study, if you do latissimus dorsi transfer, you have no reason <laughs> to limit external rotation. 
No, but my biomechanical study is not uh, is not comparable to real life and the bulk of uh, soft tissue and adhesions. And so maybe if you put something anteriorly tight, you're going to limit posteriorly. That's possible. I know that Luke, he looked that uh, one limiting factor for uh, uh, external rotation for not for for internal rotation with the reverse shoulder arthroplasty was the size of the teres minor. So. That's Maybe right. when there is something tight in front, it go, it's going to limit the back and, and vice versa. Uh, everyone is okay to, to avoid the reverse prosthesis in this case. This is a good message, no? Even yes, you have... Uh, he had no pseudoparietic shoulder and he is young. So, okay. no way to reverse. And so, sorry, Luke, because you said no pseudoparalytic shoulder and he's young, the same patient, 70 years old, no pseudoparalytic shoulder. With an anterior escape or with a... No, same, same, same patient, just uh, older. Just with a, a real pseudoparalytic uh, shoulder? No, no, no pseudoparalytic shoulder. Ah. But just 70 years old. Would ah, you go for the reverse or, or treat him the same? Uh, 70 years old. Excellent question. Seventy probably, years old, very probably. Painful. I would, I would go for reverse, more than for that uh, that transfer. Me as well. I will do a reverse as well. Sixty Matthias? years old. Sixty years old. I will do the same. <laughs> Matthias. Boy, uh, yes, I would do the same. Seventy-five years old, I would go for reverse. As all the others, sixty years old, uh, it's extremely young. Ask Pietro and all the others. Then I would go also for uh, transfer. But so, why you think that the function is better? What is the rationale? Why do not do a reverse in these patients, in the younger ones? No, young, very young, like him. I understand, but sixty-five. Yeah, when it, now we start about 65, Pietro says 55 to 60, so it's a bit, yeah, I know what you mean. But if you look really to the registry, everything which is below 60, 60 years old and the reverse, they are very good objectively, subjectively, they are not as good as the older ones, a higher complication, higher revision rate, and I try to avoid uh, a reverse in that age group. Sometimes it's not possible to avoid it, but uh, I try to avoid it. Okay. Shall we move to the next case then? Okay. To choose a, a simple case, uh, because I didn't want to talk about uh, pseudoparalysis or uh, external rotation, lag signs or tendon, like classical indications of tendon transfers or, or massive rotator cuff tear. So it's a 69 year old patient who had a rotator cuff repair, supraspinatus repair, under arthroscopy and a, a long head of the bicep stenotomy uh, 13 years ago. He was doing quite fine. Uh, and uh, 45 days ago, uh, he lifted something very heavy. And since then, his pain is, is important. And when I see him, his range of motion is perfect. Uh, full range of motion, active and passive. He has no AC pain, but he's very painful. Pain at night, 7 out of 10. And when I test uh, his tendons, I feel pain on the supra and infraspinatus, and I feel that the, the subscapularis is weak. And so here are his, his radiographs, and this is why I mentioned that the AC was not painful, because he has some arthritis on the AC joint, but apart from that, uh, there's nothing uh, uh, much to say. And, and he had an MRI when I saw him, and so here is the coronal T2. Then we can look at the axial T2. And maybe the sagittal T1. And so, uh, Luke, do you want to comment on these uh, images? Could you? Sure. Show me again the... Coronal T2? Yes. I am not able to see how is the supraspinatus and
Okay, so now what is the delay before the new trauma and, uh, and now? It's, uh, one month and a half. Okay. How old? And he's 60, 69 years old. Okay, for me, the, the only problem for him is the pain. That's right? Yes, because, I agree. Okay, so physiotherapy and uh, corticoid injection. At okay. 69. With a with a with a fatty infiltration of uh, infraspinatus, I I think no. No, it was subscapularis. Ah, subscapularis again. Yes. 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 Maybe is a grade two fatty infiltration of the supraspinatus, correct? But on yes. the upper part of the subscap, it's uh, much. Better. It's grade three, four. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I agree with you. Uh, I treated him uh, conservatively, but my question for you, for for the for all of you, was: um, it seems like it's a, a, a new traumatic tear from the history, even though there is some amount of fatty infiltration. I agree on the on the MRI. And so, would any one of you, 69 years old, is is young? Would any one of you had? Uh, tried and operate him to try and repair something from what he had yes i, I would do it an arthroscopic okay. uh, revision uh, surgery in a case like that i would so you it. would you no so cartilage acute? damage no cartilage i i agree no. first conservatively physical therapy corticosteroid and let's see but if it's not okay. working you have knife pain then i will do an arthroscopic revision Maybe if, if you have a technical problem, you can do an interval slide still working. And I, I would go for a revision surgery. Okay, but so no one would treat him like an acute tear and try to and, and, and consider that uh, that we can restore his pre-accident pain uh, status, I mean, by, by going early. No, it but would yes, have been no. different. It would have been different if Sepscap is uh, not fatty and filtrated. Okay. But in such okay. a case. Okay. And uh, of course, this is what he had. And uh, I saw him again after a few months. And he was uh, still perfect range of motion, but still not improved. His pain still at 7 out of 10, night pain. And so with these images, so kind of uh, acute on chronic tear with a uh, what would you do? Try and, and re-repair him, or consider that the that the subscap is too damaged, and and that you need to do a tandem transfer, or or he's 69 years old, so go for a reverse, even though he has perfect range of motion. How do you treat this this pain that is resistant to a non-operative treatment, Matthias? Yes. Yeah, so, in fact, you said he had full range of motion, so no internal yes. rotations lag and full flexion. He's, he's weak in internal rotation, but no lag. When I put his hand, he can, he can, he can hold, but yes. he cannot resist against me. And, and he's a 69-year-old old who is a patient who is very active, so he's in good Active, shape. yes. So may, may, maybe I agree with Pietro, maybe this is a rare indication where, where it discuss about the partial repair. I don't think that I can improve the situation with the tendon transfer because, uh, yeah, it, it's, I'm not so sure. Maybe go back and repair it and if the tension and everything is so bad, then I would go maybe also for uh, for a pec major. Uh, but this is no good. Uh, I, I think I would go for another repair. Pietro, you said you would do another repair? Yes. Yes, for sure I would go for another repair. And then so and so you would try and reattach the subscap even though you it's bad. Ah, I will try. Maybe I missed something in the axial view, but I did not see a complete repair of the subscap. No, it's not. It's not complete. I agree. Not, it's just the the upper third. Yes, correct? probably. Just a little. Yes, here. Yeah, yeah. It's the upper third. So I I, I would go for a for a repair. I agree with Matthias uh, and. For sure, for sure. And Luc, what would you do? Yes, I agree. I would go to, to see. For example, I see that the long head of biceps is always here. Maybe it's, 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 in, it's in the groove, but it has been cut. It was, ah, okay. uh, it was uh, yes. 
and uh, probably it will be a partial repair in such a case. Okay, and so when you say partial repair, because partial repair for uh, for a uh, posterior cuff, we, we, we know quite clearly what it is, but partial repair for an anterior superior cuff, how do you do that? You you try to reattach the subscap, and, and if you cannot reattach the supra, what do you do? No, you, you do an interval slide procedure. So interval slide, uh, you separate the supra from the, from the infra, right? You separate, you, you can do a posterior interval slide, but then Steve Worker described even the anterior one, you ah, so by opening the, the interval, the the okay. you detach the anterior okay. part and, and you restore the anterior cable. Okay. And in, in some of these cases, this is really working, it's rebalancing the shoulder, the pain is reduced. You, you have to know that in this case, the cartilage is not damaged. You don't have a, a superior uh, escape of the head. So for, for me, I, I had done some of these cases with good results, really. More than expected, you know? You say, oh, it's unbelievable. Sometimes you are surprised. Okay. If, uh, what you do? If, you, if you do, uh, if you try to do a partial repair, but you have a big hole, uh, do you do a superior capsule reconstruction or no, in this case? No, actually, I had uh, a bad experience with superior capsular reconstruction. I don't know if you, Matthias, Luke, uh, Jean David, what, what's your experience? But I do not trust a lot in superior capsular reconstruction. But maybe in my hands. Eh? Uh, a question regarding tendon transfer: Do you have a limit regarding the age of the patient? Sixty-nine. Yes. Yes. I say yes. For me, is is a limit. Matthias. Yeah, that's that's why I, I was not uh, quickly in the decision making before because I think basically it's uh, it's kind of an age limit. But there are patients with sixty nine which are physically younger than, by far younger than sixty nine, and maybe there is a question of uh, discussion. If it would be very young, of course, then we would uh, maybe go quicker for it. But uh, basically, sixty nine. If it's a physic, if it's a sixty nine year old, really, then I would. Don't go, would not go for a transfer and a partial repair, as I said. And, and you insisted on the fact that he had a good range of motion to, to say that you were not going to do the transfer. Is good range of motion a contraindication for you to do a transfer? Do you do transfers sometimes only for pain or never? It has to do to improve motion or something. Me? Yes, you. Yes. Transfer is good for pain, so PEC major transfer works also for pain relief in those patients, and I think it's a good indication also to, to go for pain relief, even though he has a, a lack in internal rotation. It was only a question about knowing the situation about the internal rotation lack, because I do not think that you can revert a passive lift-off test for according to Gerber and uh, an insufficient subscapularis with a PEC major or an anterior lat dorsi transfer. But is it really a goal to revert that uh, internal no, rotation no. laxer? No. no. No, 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 no. I just okay. said that I cannot restore this. And so do you think it's stupid to, to do a, a, an open deltopectoral delto approach for this one? Try and repair what you can, and if you cannot, so you go, you're not satisfied, you go for the transfer? Yes, you can. Regarding the technique, Matthias, of the pectoris major, do you, do you take the two bands or only the sternal part and do you put under the conjunct tendon or over the conjunct tendon? Yes, cosmetically it's not very nice to take both bands but nevertheless I took so far I took both and I go over the conjoint tendon uh, and not under. Uh, to my knowledge there is only one comparative study of the Berlin group which, uh, which has shown that, that they have no difference in the results and I'm scared that uh, once if I go under, I would uh, make maybe a lesion or uh, entrapment of the muscular cutaneous nerve, and that, that's why I go over. Uh, Pietro Paolini, uh, Paladini, in this case, I think that he proposed a pectoris minor transfer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, they what they do you think about that? Paolo and then Giuseppe Porcellini, they support and they're publishing a series of 30 cases. Yes. They presented in our national meetings. I was the moderator, and uh, so I was surprised. I said, because for me, it, it, it is very short. It is not easy to transfer the, the PEC minor, uh, but he is really enthusiastic. 
and they will publish a series of 30 cases. I, I suggest, please, go and publish, because it's a unique experience. I, I, I'm not so, so brave to do it. I don't know if you like and you want to try, or you tried already, but I prefer a PEC, a PEC major. I do just the sternal, and like Matthias, I prefer to stay in front of the conjoint tendon. I don't want to, to get trouble to go behind the conjoint tendon. Okay. And Philippe, what do you do for man? this patient? Uh, I, I think that uh, for this patient, if the superior part of the subscapularis is not repairable because it's degenerative, because the muscle is atrophic, I do a uh, pectoris minor by uh, by arthroscopy in this situation. Because you can extend, uh, we describe this technique with Marco and you know very, very well. I think that is the only one indication for me when the superior part is not reparable and with an uh, imbalance of the shoulder. For me, it's not aggressive surgery and uh, there is no morbidity. And uh, I have few few cases because the indications are very rare, very rare. But uh, I propose that in this case. Are not you afraid to have a loss of external rotation after this uh, short transfer? I medialize the insertion and uh, I take the bone of the coracoid process and I, uh, to extend the pectoris minor and uh, I fix in the medial part of the less stability, but it's sure I limit the external rotation. But in the series of Palladini, they have a limitation of external rotation. And this is not happening with the PEC major. With the PEC major, of they course. do not lose the external rotation. Yes, of course. The main advantage of such a transfer is uh, to harvest a non-essential muscle for the yes. glenohumeral joint. Yes. Yeah. OK, do you have a, a comment? A good case? I, I, I would like to share the third presentation, maybe. This is a, a patient, uh, a male patient, sedentary activity, 64 years old. Uh, he was operated in 2011 for supraspinatus tear, infraspinatus tear. It was not traumatic, degenerative, with atrophy of the supraspinatus and fatty infiltration. And the surgeon did a, a rotator cuff repair with a tenotomy of the biceps by arthroscopy. So, the patient was very happy during uh, 10 years and I saw this patient in March and uh, uh, with a painful, no traumatic case. And you see that a very good range of motion, a good subscapularis, pain. You see that this is a painful shoulder, 8 per 10. The function is not so bad, it's 50% because there is a a good subscapularis, but no arthritis. There is a little sub superior migration of the humeral head. And uh, during my clinical examination, uh, external rotation was weak, but it was possible, but it was weak. So this is a uh, MRI. This is the first video. You see that this is a return of the, of the supraspinatus. Do again to show you very well the complete tear of the supra spinatus and the second MRI. You see the subcapillaris is correct. I'll show you two times. There is my law, he's in her six capillaries. And uh, the last video for the quality of the muscle. I think that this is here. You see that atrophic supraspinatus, fatty infiltration of the infraspinatus, and good six capillaries. I'll show you again. If you want to summarize uh, this patient, 
This is a recurrent tear, massive posterior superior curve tear, no pseudoparietic, good subscapularis, with an atrophy of fatty infiltration type 2, more than uh, 2. And he was operated in 10 years ago. He was very happy, and after a degenerative tear, and I saw him with this situation. And I started with physiotherapy, but it was not enough. And uh, I saw this patient. I remember the, the age of this patient for you. He's 64 years old, sedentary activity. During 10 years, this was perfect. And now, you see that, good subscapularis on weak, weak external rotation. Okay, you can vote the attendees, 120. Thank, thank you very much for, for your uh, very nice uh, activity because you, you vote every time. And it's very nice to see and I, I explain your vote. Uh, maybe we start with Matthias this time. <laughs> okay, so for, for me, it's uh, isolated uh, loss or weakness of external rotation with uh, some pain. In, uh, he, I think he has some uh, impairments of the activities of daily living of external rotation, if we would assess this. And um, this patient is in good shape with 64, as far as I can understand. And he has a hypertrophic, uh, additional hypertrophic teres minor. I think I would go for a left door side transfer, although you want to have C lower trap, but uh, go for a latissimus dorsi. Your argument uh, for uh, for tunnel transfer is uh, is not pseudoparietic. This is an argument. Muscle yes. is not functional. Yes, I don't. Uh, yes, uh, sorry. I, it is not through the paresis okay. and not through the paralysis, and there is no anterior superior escape. There is a good subscapularis, there is a good quality of the teres minor as well, uh, even will help me. And uh, there is a little bit of shortening of the chromohumeral distance, which is not the contraindication for me to go for a tetan transfer. Okay, thank you, Matthias. Luke, what do you think about? This situation. Uh, he has a very nice uh, terrace minor, and I'm surprised that it is not able to have uh, external rotation in abduction, not more than 20 degrees, because with uh, such terrace minor form, it's possible to have nine, 90 degrees. First, second, uh, as published by Philippe Collin, uh, when you have a so nice subscap and a so nice terrace minor usually you are able to recover a very nice function of your shoulder with physiotherapy. So I would go for that first. Okay, you, you don't want to operate, you, you physiotherapy a lot? Yes. Okay, okay. But because, he, because he has a very nice terrace minor and a very yes. nice touch cap. Okay, Pietro? I, I add injection in a case like that. Okay. You can help to relieve the pain with injection. And then uh, with physical therapy, I agree 100% with Luke. And if it's not working, I will send this guy to you, Philippe, in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you see that the external rotation went 20 degrees. I agree with you. Uh, but sometimes, I agree with Pietro, if you do injection, you increase the range of motion a lot. Because uh, sometimes people go to the physiotherapist and they, uh, they don't progress. And uh, after physiotherapy, after injection, you release the pain, you release the pain, and sometimes I agree with uh, Luke, you can increase uh, the range of motion. But uh, sorry, uh, can I ask you? He didn't have physiotherapy and all this treatment before. I didn't get this point. Sorry, that was my error. Maybe he has no therapy before at all. No, no, I, I, I starting uh, every time with physiotherapy. Yes, but uh, uh, I am surprised some patients with a good terrace minor, good subscapularis, they are still painful and they don't progress and they visit you again, uh, Luke. And yes. what are you doing? I have some patients like that. I, I am completely agree with the biomechanic of terrace minor subscapularis, but I have some patient who doesn't progress after physiotherapy. So if, uh, 
if there is no progress, probably I would consider a transfer. In such a case, because uh, Terrace Miner is very nice, probably the best transfer would be a, a lower trapezius transfer to replace the role of the infraspinatus. But uh, okay. I have no real uh, experience with that. Jean David, do you have a comment, Jean David? I completely agree with Luc. That's what I would do. I would uh, do rehabilitation as much as possible. And if he comes back and he's still painful despite all the injections and the physio, I would do a, a lower trapezius because for me the goal is to replace the infraspinatus and the best time in transfer I know for the infra is the lower trapezius. There is another possibility, Philippe, that uh, uh, was not possible to, to see very well in the MRI. If this guy maybe has a cartilage damage, so he's already uh, a calf arthropathy is going on. This can no, be the another cartilage chance. Is correct. The cartilage is correct in this guy. So it's not good, no? cartilage. Yes, no arthritis, okay. no problem. Okay. Uh, I'm not so agree with you regarding uh, lower trapezius because if you have a good terrace minor, I think that uh, if you want to increase the strength on the extra rotation, in my experience, I prefer to, to do latissimus dorsi transfer. I, uh, I keep lower trap if there is no terrace minor. Uh, but uh, this is my experience, but uh, I did for this patient uh, the, the proposition of Matthias. I did uh, a latissimus dorsi transfer, a partial repair. He has some arthritis. It was a, a very old patient because uh, I used a tunnel into the bone and I fixed uh, the latissimus dorsi into the bone. Now we stop completely because uh, you know the publication of Chancani with a uh, high return. And uh, I did that simus dorsi and I fixed to the footprint of the of the infraspinatus. And this is a result that we after 18 months very satisfied. This is latissimus dorsi transfer. And you see that external rotation was 50 degrees, not 90 degrees. I think that the patient was stiff, a little stiff, and it's the reason why, but it was satisfied after uh, uh, latissimus dorsi transfer. My question is, uh, if uh, for the attendees, would you summarize the indication uh, Matthias and Luke of uh, Matthias or lower trap on latissimus dorsi on Jean David? Would you summarize your indication for for people, if you have no teres minor, no infraspinatus, what do you do if you have a good subscapularis, of course, good subscapularis on good deltoid, because in this patient, the deltoid was good. But if you have no infra, no teres, or no infra isolated, do you use the same tonal transfer, Matthias? Well, I see, I mean, basically, as you said, for uh, if I have, uh, if I want an increase with a hypertrophic teres minor, then the ideal indication in my hands is a latissimus dorsi. Yes. If you have absolutely no teres minor at all, and in, uh, you are in uh, uh, external rotation one as well as in two, you are impaired, then maybe a lower trap is uh, preferable. But I mean, this is a huge debate regarding these two transfers, and of course, I'm basically trained with the low lat dorsi, so I'm a little bit biased towards this decision. So, David? So, for me, if you have an irreparable isolated supraspinatus there, I think uh, almost everything works partial repair, tenotomy, whatever. If uh, SCR, maybe even, if um, you have a supra and infraspinatus tear, uh, uh, and uh, physio uh, irreparable, I mean, and physiotherapy does not work and injections do not work anymore. My goal is to replace the infraspinatus, and so I do a lower trapezius. And uh, if you have an irreparable infraspinatus and teres minor, and the patient has an external rotation back sign, uh, my goal is to restore active external rotation, and so I also do a, a lower trapezius. So I do not do any more 
uh, posterior superior latissimus dorsi. The only latissimus dorsis I do is either anteriorly or uh, lepiscopal with the uh, with the reverse. Biomechanically, is not the true life. I agree with you, but it's clear that in abduction, latissimus dorsi is more useful than the lower trap. I agree, but we we published with Bassem the cases. Uh, of patients who had an intact teres minor and they have very good results and and and, and so I think the, the both the latissimus dorsi and the low trapezius work for uh, for patients with irreparable supra and infra with a good teres minor but uh, I'm more used to doing a low trapezius so since I think both work I do the one I uh, do more. Okay, Luc, uh, when you see the patients, what do you do? For me, it's uh, no uh, lack sign. Lack sign. For me, it's exactly like uh, Jean David accepted that if uh, I have no infraspinatus and no teres minor, I do a lack transfer in okay. such a case. Okay. Uh, we have five minutes more. Maybe you can. Uh, what do you want? Do you have, uh, Philippe, do you, uh, go ahead, Matthias. Yeah, sorry. I have a question, Luke. Maybe I misunderstand, but John David, you said that if you have both no teres minor and no infraspinatus, you go for a lat dorsi, no. and uh, or not? No, no, if no, I John David, something. John David says lower trapezius transfer. Yes. If there is no infraspinatus and no teres minor, that's right. Or? Yes. 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 Okay. But I think we I understood the opposite. No, okay, I'm I agree. Sorry. And for me, and for me, in such a case, I do a lat transfer and not a You do a lepiscopo, like uh, Boileau's publication. So you do both, or you do just an isolated lat uh, lat missile? Isolated. 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 So if you have no teres minor and no infraspinatus, you go for an isolated latissimus dorsi. Yes. Okay. Yes, but Matthias, you understand that is not is a technique of episcopal. It turn around the numerus and it fixed to metaphysis part. Yes, this is a technique of Pascal. Yeah, I know. I d I did some cases like that, but uh, I am very surprised regarding the patients who lose forward elevation after this kind of trauma transfer. It's the reason why for me, episcopal isolated without any reverse is risky for the forward elevation in my experience but uh, uh, i prefer in this case to do lower trap lower trap for lack sign it's more logical i think uh maybe uh, uh what do you want to do jean david i show you the mutandinus or you have a time yes i think it's interesting no no i think it's it's the best if you show that okay i show you very very short case because i I didn't do anything for these patients, but uh, this is a patient uh, who sees 64. The, the problem is, uh, 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 no, it's not. This is this is this, this is this case. You see that? I saw a patient after six months, after nine months, and he was still painful after a repair. This is a double row. This is a supraspinatus and infraspinatus tear, type two with good muscle. And uh, he did the consultation again because he was limited in range of motion, 80% on painful. And uh, I did the uh, uh, MRI, and you see that this uh, this mutandinous partial tear. Do you have this experience of uh, of this lesion, and what are you doing? Because he was still painful. Do you think that this is the etiology of the pain, uh, or? Do, do you have some cases like, like that uh, with uh, MRI control? Pietro? Yes, I, uh, I had a few cases and this is because of the double row construct. Because it locks the tendon on the humeral head and then you break uh, the muscle tendon junction. That, that's a big problem of the double row repair. And I treated a couple of these cases doing a, a repair a kind of side-to-side uh, -side repair, trying to fix the rest of the calf to uh, the part of the tendon that is still there. But the results uh, are not fantastic. I mean, the patient maybe reduce the pain, but they do not recover the strength. 
that's my experience is is uh, really frustrating in case like that unfortunately thank you luke what do you think about the mutantinous sweater it's very difficult to repair in my hand i i i think it's not possible to have a healing when uh, when we do a such sure before be, between the muscle and the tendon uh, probably it can be tried but uh, no in such in such a case i remember because i, I have seen some of my case very old cases I, during my residency, I spent six months with Goutalier, and after that, I did uh, many translations of the supraspinatus. And in fact, uh, I was surprised to see that uh, many of them uh, have good results. Pro probably it's like uh, RCR. And uh, in such a case, maybe it would be interesting to do a translation of the supraspinatus to do a good, uh, a good repair without tension. But it's only an idea, exactly. Okay. Matthias, do, do, did you, yes, do I, you have some I, cases I, like that? Yeah, try to, to okay. treat them with skillful neglect. And uh, no, no, not uh, as Pietro said, I think uh, I treated once or twice to repair it, but uh, I had not good experience in going in and re-repair this muscular tendinous unit even though also with augmentation of some uh, some cases uh, tried also with the patch and uh, it's not uh, very reproducible the results there and so pietro you never do double row because of that i i don't like a lot double row uh, i prefer not to do it because uh, i'm afraid uh, to have a pull out or the media row or this kind of lesion do you have experience of Regenetten, the, the patch of Smith and Nephew? I, I do not have any experience on that, but this is not a bridge uh, patch. It's just, uh, you know, an augment. So it's not working in a case like that. I have I have no experience with the region and the region at ten, but he has uh, no, to my knowledge, no uh, resistance to the blood strength, as Pietro said. And I would use uh, a can of a patch which has some uh, resistance strength uh, if 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 I would operate those case in one of those cases. Okay, but uh, it's very difficult to do. You do first injection physiotherapy, and after you see again. You agree? Okay. Yes. Yes. I, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you, you you speak very clearly with the patient. You can try to <laughs> fix something, and sometimes you know, even bad cases, you can have results. But uh, the patient expectation should be clear that it's a kind of salvage procedure because this this guy is young, the tear is very bad. There is not a big answer on this. And so you can do your best, but uh, the patient shouldn't expect to have a fantastic shoulder after your reoperation. That's it. And uh, Philippe, if, 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 if you don't, uh, what is your plan if, if uh, non-operative treatment does not work? The, the key point, I think that uh, for me now, a long time ago, I don't do any knots on the, on the first row. In my experience, because it's very risky, and many times you have this kind of necrosis of the of the junction at the tendon but uh, i think that in this case i do in my experience tendon transfer to to go down the humeral head because i don't think that you can re repair again and i agree with luke that if you do a suture between the tendon and the muscle it's not possible to repair Sometimes, uh, sometimes you have you have a kind of scar in the muscle part mm -hmm. so it is like that you have a, a four or five millimeters of scar tissue attached to the to the muscle so you can try to repair the whole li like to do uh, you know an achilles tendon repair that's yes. the concept but in your practice when you do a, a cuff repair now uh, if you want to summarize your technique with type two do you use double row with knots over the tendon or you pass the, the suture and you do a parachute technique or what what do you do matthias 
I pass the tandem. I do uh, uh, on the la uh, I do kind of a four configuration with the lateral two on uh, uh, two strands. I do a Mason Allen configuration under arthroscopy. Then I pull to the lateral side, reduce it uh, as I can reduce it, and I gently put a knot on the medial side, but don't squeeze the tendon at all. And then I do a, a lateral uh, a lateral anchor as well. Okay, Luke. Luke, what do you do? I don't like to have knots in the subacromial space, so usually uh, I do not knots on the first row, and I use okay. like the parachute technique. Or... Pietro? No, no, I, I do always try to do a single row and to give uh, the less tension that I can on the, on, on, the, on the repair. When you add tension on rotator cuff, this is a big problem. Okay, you medialize sometimes? You medialize yes. sometimes, Pietro? Yes, sometimes I medialize. It has been a great, great meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank, really you. To you. Thank you. Thank you to spend time uh, for the shoulder ball. We wish you an excellent summer, a good rest, and uh, we start again in September. And uh, the topic will be to manage a glenoid loosening and uh, tips and tricks uh, to simplify this difficult situation and we prepare with jean david a uh, good case to for the expert to give the tips and tricks because it's it's not very easy and the experience is very important in uh, this situation thank you everyone and uh, i wish you a good summer on a good evening thank you jean david thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so much take thank care you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.